Hello and welcome to this discussion on autoimmune gastritis. Autoimmune gastritis. We already talked about chronic gastritis being caused by two causes. The first one is H. pylori infection and that is 90% of the cases of acute gastritis is caused by H. pylori infection while 10% of the case of a chronic gastric infection, chronic gastritis, 10% of the cases is caused by autoimmune. This by an autoimmune attack against the epithelium of the gastric mucosa. So let's talk today about autoimmune gastritis, meaning it's chronic gastritis chronic gastritis that is caused by an autoimmune attack. Okay, what happens in autoimmune chronic gastritis is the immune system mounts an antibody response targeted against parietal cells of our stomach and against the product of parietal cells known as intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is very important for the absorption of the vitamin B12. If there is no vitamin B12, we will develop a form of megaloblastic anemia known as pernicious anemia. That's why autoimmune gastritis leads eventually to vitamin B12 deficiency and megaloblastic anemia in the form of pernicious anemia leading later to deficiency in iron or iron deficiency anemia. Why? Because the, anti the antibodies of our immune system have targeted the parietal cells that synthesize this intrinsic factor. We also have another issue. When parietal cells are targeted by the immune attack, what do they also do? What do parietal cells also do in addition to the secretion of vitamin B12? I'm sorry, in addition to the secretion of intrinsic factor that is important for the later absorption of vitamin B12 in the intestine. What do they do in addition to that? Parietal cells secrete acid. Now we have this term hypochloridria and hypochloridria is what we see in H. pylori chronic uh, gastritis where the microbe, this bacteria H. pylori would lead eventually to a drop in the acidity or an increase in the pH because we talked about how the H. pylori bacteria has these ureases and able to synthesize ammonia from urea and that leads to an elevation in the pH and a drop in the acidity which helps the H. pylori bacteria to thrive and that is called hypochloridria. However, in the case of autoimmune gastritis we don't just have hypochloridria, we have achloridria, meaning an absolute diminishing or disappearance of a, a severe drop, a severe lack of acid secretion. Because who secretes acid? It's the parietal cells. Why are they no longer secreting acid? Because they have been targeted by an autoimmune reaction. Because now we have chronic gastritis caused by an autoimmune attack. So, parietal cells no longer being able to give us intrinsic factor, not being able to, to take and absorb vitamin B12 leading to pernicious anemia, a form of megaloblastic anemia as we said, and later on leading to iron deficiency anemia. And also parietal cells being targeted by this severe autoimmune attack they will be unable to generate acid and they will be achloridria.
A chloridria. A C H L O R H Y D R I A. Hope I spelled it right. A chloridria. While in H pylori, uh, chronic gastritis, we have hypochloridria. Okay, so now we don't have acid. We have a chloridria. What are the consequences? What's the feedback mechanism? Gastric cells will undergo hyperplasia because gastric cells are the ones, are the cells that secrete gastrin. These G cells will secrete gastrin and gastrin will stimulate parietal cells to secrete acid. Now there's no acid due to the targeting of the parietal cells by the autoimmune attack. Gastric cells don't know that. So they will undergo hyperplasia as an adaptive mechanism to this drop in acid secretion. And that's why an apparent hyperplasia of gastric cells, G cells, that is an indication of autoimmune chronic gastritis. Also, there will be severe release of gastrin. So there is achloridria, parietal cells unable to secrete acid that leads to gastric cells being aware and secreting keeping on secreting gastrin 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 in order to stimulate parietal cells they don't know that the parietal cells have been damaged by that autoimmune attack so they keep on secreting gastrin leading to hypergastrinemia so hypergastrinemia is one of the consequences of autoimmune gastritis, autoimmune chronic gastritis, because gastric cells are trying to, they are underwent hyperplasia to secrete gastrin that, that would stimulate parietal cells and remind parietal cells to secrete um, a hydrochloric acid but they don't know that they have been damaged. Okay, so these are the main features. How do we track that there is, and how do we diagnose that there is an autoimmune chronic gastritis? By detecting in the blood antibodies against intrinsic factor and antibodies against parietal cells. There's also something very important. There are forms of cells known as chief cells in the stomach. They secrete a peptic enzyme in an inactive form known as pepsinogen 1. So them too, they will be targeted. These uh, chief cells, they will be targeted by the autoimmune reaction in autoimmune chronic gastritis. And they will be destroyed, leading to a deficiency or a drop in the synthesis and the uh, creation of pepsinogen 1. So if there is a drop in pepsinogen 1 creation, that means there's a damage to the chief cells caused by the autoimmune attack in autoimmune chronic gastritis. If there is a drop in vitamin B12, if there's a malabsorption to vitamin B12, if there is pernicious anemia that could be tracked back to antibodies damaging intrinsic factor, that is a, one of the ways we diagnose autoimmune chronic gastritis. If parietal cells are damaged by an, auto, by an autoimmune response, that is an indication of autoimmune chronic gastritis. And um, what else? If there is a drop in the acidity, if, if there is a chloridria, a severe drop in the acidity, indicating a dysfunction of these parietal cells, that secrete hydrochloric acid. That indicates uh, damage caused by an autoimmune reaction. And I left the best for last. And that is, what is the other name of autoimmune chronic gastritis? It's atrophic gastritis. And it should make perfect sense for you. Why we call autoimmune chronic gastritis atrophic gastritis? Why is there an atrophy? Because chief cells destroyed, parietal cells destroyed, 
intrinsic factor destroyed ability to secrete acid destroyed there is so much damage to the to the cells and tissues of the stomach leading to an overall atrophy so atrophic gastritis is exclusive to autoimmune gastritis so autoimmune chronic gastritis causes atrophy that's why it's also known as atrophic gastritis so let this be a first step in our discussion as we move on to learn more about autoimmune gastritis thank you very much